Hey, and welcome to the show. This show is brought to you by Patreon members like you. Thank you for being a Patreon member. As a Patreon member, you get a video of the podcast that we put out twice a month. Now, on with the show. Marty Dean is in the house. What's going on, buddy? I missed saying goodbye to you yesterday. Sorry. Marty? Yeah. Hey, what's going on, man? I gotta, I gotta call you. I gotta call him tomorrow. Maybe. Yes. I gotta call him. I'm gonna call him at the end of the week, because... I think he's probably like us, where he's just trying to get caught up on everything. Mm-hmm. So I gotta call Marty in the week. Remind Besides me. Besides God, okay, I remind you. I you gotta call Marty Dean. Thank you, thank you. All right, done. All right, what's going on, everyone? Steve. We're back, we're here. We hope you guys enjoyed the content that we put up uh, on YouTube. It wasn't here on Facebook. No. Um, so if you didn't catch any of that because you're just a Facebook guy, hey, yeah. we have a YouTube channel. Shocking, I know. Real quick, we'll get it out of the way. DNF Tool Drawer is a place you can find all the cool tools. Teespring slash store slash five stars where you can get the cool shirts. And of yep. course, podcast, Patreon, all that fun stuff. A little crazy. A little crazy. Yeah. As you can see, we're like you. We have a car in the bay. We came home. Paul had stuff waiting for us. Apparently, he didn't realize that, you know, we don't get sleep when we're on these things. So that's okay. That's something all. We're here, so. Let's get these questions. Bismarck What's up, Brian? Modesto, what's going on? Hey, Christian. What large out. Uh, what does that say? What large out chase did you, did you make? make, Dean? Last time it was a Little Lamb. What is he asking? I don't I understand. I have no idea. Purchase. Oh, oh, okay. Purchase. Last time was Little Lamb. L E Amp. Um. Oh, what did we buy? Okay, I see what you're saying. Um. Did you send the shirts? What shirts? To Jen. Yes. Yeah. I got a. Uh, I got a tracking. She should be getting them this week. I got. Okay. I got the tracking information. So I did purchase, got it. Uh, so Educar is uh, a guy named Ken Ward uh, has a company called Educar, and what it is, it is where you can learn all about DSPs, how to set them up, what they're about. He's actually got a page on Teachable. I don't know if any of you have heard of Teachable, but you can go there, and he has a course that you can take. <laughs> okay, okay. He has a cool. course you can take. And we got it, Mari. And you can learn about um, my t-shirt size XX. No problem. Um, where you can learn about DSPs and how to set them up and all pass filters and crossovers and all that fun stuff. What's um, that from Norway? But you do have to pay. And, and we did. We paid. So he makes this guy here. Now what this is, this is an all pass filter tester. So we won't go into what an all pass filter is because it's only an hour long show. But needless to say, what this device is designed to do is take two inputs and then it has one output that goes off to your to your <clears throat> BS, to your RTA. What's that, Jason? And Thank then you, we buddy. can test to see if there's a difference between the right and left output, which would cause which would show the all pass filter on our RTA as a big dip. And then we can know we have to go in there and fix it. So this is a cool tool he had. It comes with some cool probes. But this was we we he's there, he always teaches classes. You went to his class. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he teaches a class called the four steps. To... Anyways, it's called the four steps. It, it's it's, yeah. it's, it's okay. basically a process that we show you in our videos when we're uh, evaluating a system. Uh, we were doing it before you took the class. It's just you took the class oh, because it's always fun. We have training with Ken next month. It is a blast. So yeah. um, he does he does have an RTA that I want to buy. Yes. Um, he yes. didn't have it there though, so I couldn't buy it. So once we get that, we'll let you know. It's gonna be fun. Um, but yeah, this was the big purchase. Oh, and then also we ordered some mobile solutions router bits, but they had sold out by the time we actually got to talk them, talk to him. So Brian Schmidt over at Mobile Solutions, that's the place where we get the tools like the PT9A polarity tester that we use. Mm-hmm. He was also on the live show. Um, and then we have we have some more goodies coming from him too that we're going to use for making speaker things that we'll talk about once we get that here Correct. for you guys to see. But Really cool router bits. Yes. Hello, friends. What's up from Philly? What's up, Carl? So, yeah, it was a good trip. Um, honestly, though, there was a couple other things I wanted to buy. Yes. But we just never got around to it. So Marty Dean, who was just on here, sells the Aussie irons, um, which we did talk about. They're the cool battery-operated um, irons that is just on, gets hot, turn it off, and it cools down. They awesome, man. Uh, they Ken awesome. Ward, Educar Mobile Solutions, best in biz. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, if you're on Mobile Solutions, you can get the Aussie iron. Yep. Uh, I believe you can also get Ken's tool there, too. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
I was just wondering what this guy was doing behind us. Okay, so uh, you want to go talk to him? Yeah, on. okay. Need a solder and iron? Yes, we need to. So the soldering iron, um, I didn't get a chance. I was gonna buy two before we left, and I just I never got around to it. So it was kind of kind of funny. But needless to say, as time goes on, we find a lot of neat things that we want to pick up and buy. So as we get those, we will show you guys. But other than that. We'll talk more about it on Saturday. We just wanted to get back in here. We just want to start answering questions. What's up, Victor? Um, oh, and this shit's cool. We're gonna talk about it. stuff's cool. We're gonna talk about. It. Sorry, a little tired. Uh, but we'll go. We'll give a. Uh, we'll give. We'll, we won't talk about the uh, knowledge fest anymore today. We'll get, We'll give you guys a break on that. We'll talk about it a little bit on Saturday once we get a chance to do the uh, the video. So it did. We did do a really cool video while we were there. Hopefully, it turns out. What's up, Bill? And we'll talk all about that. I got six by nine holes in my door. I'm back. What's your choice? Under a hundred bucks for some mid base six point five, six by nines, or will a seven inch fit? Yes, a seven inch will fit. And if you want a seven inch, if you're a round speaker guy, obviously the Kenwood Exelon sevens are a really good choice up, to Bill? go with. Um, you can get them in a coaxial or a component. And Exelon means they make two. So they have the regular Exelons and they have the XR Exelon. So you can head over to Exelon or go over to, it is a Porsche. It is a Porsche. Um, you can head over to Kenwood and go to the Exelon section on the page and you can check those out. But those mm -hmm. are really nice too. The nice thing about those is they do come with the six by nine bracket that allows you to put them in. Now, if you want hey, a really nice six by nine. What's up, man? Component 6x9s are becoming real popular. So depending on there again, Kenwood is making 6x9 components. So do you have that little box? Oh, it's over there. So 6x9, Kenwood's making 6x9 components where it comes with a 2.5 inch or it comes with a 3.5 inch coaxial. So you yeah. have those as an option too. So if you have like a Chrysler or a Toyota or something like that, this is a little 2.5 guy here that they have. Um, we don't have it because it actually ended up going. It's in this, already in. The it's car. already in this Porsche. It's going to be yeah. the mid base because in this Porsche, it's getting an eight inch. Um, <laughs> it's getting the eight inch Focal Universals. It's getting a set of these in the door. The tweeter is going to go up in the dash, and then we needed a small mid range to replace the factory mid range. So we're going to go ahead and use these two inch Kenwood Exelons. We also, Focal in the Universal Series makes a 6x9 component or coaxial system, <laughs> component system where you can do a mid range yes, and tired. tweeter. And then if you're an Alpine guy, Alpine makes three 6x9 components. So you have the S type, the R type, and the X type. Yes, um, my, yes, you're right. And then Morel and Audison Prima also have the 6x9. But under 100 bucks, which was the question you asked. Mm -hmm. um, Pioneer. Pioneer also makes the TSAs. Okay. And they make the TSDs. Okay. That you might want to check out. So under 100 bucks, that would be probably where you're at. Uh, but Ken, now if you don't need a component, okay, you could get in a regular line Kenwoods too. But either way, there's a bunch of things to choose from there. Check them out. Uh, what do we got here? I just wanted to say Audio Control has excellent customer support. I had an amp with an issue and they helped me troubleshoot it. Eventually I need to replace. Which could be, okay, no cost. That is awesome. Nice thing about Audio Control is that their products do come with, how long is the warranty, Fernando? Five years, guy. Five That's right. Years. So, of course, they're going to have Everybody great customer can. service because they're willing to give you a five-year warranty on the product. Mm -hmm. They're going to be your friend for a long time. So, exactly. one of the only companies out there that gives a, a warranty that is that, that long. That long, yeah. The closest thing to that is probably going to be Kenwood Exelon, which does give you a two-year warranty. Okay, so Kenwood Exelon, not just Kenwood. No, Kenwood does it. Kenwood Exelon, yep. two-year warranty. Make sure you grab the so, Exelon. So Victor's are. saying those Kenwood XR is what I'm going to go for soon. We'll see about that. <laughs> Your budget might be Thank more. you, John. Thank you. Isn't it? Better be. What's up, Bobby? Bobby's nuts are in the house. And bolts. Nuts and bolts. Yes. Um, five years, bam, just like that. Exactly. Um, nice, I'm checking it out. Cool. Uh, five years of installed by an audio shop. Well, there you go. Have it installed by an audio shop. That's worth the hundred bucks to have someone put it in. Yeah. Uh, welcome back. Thank you, Bobby. What's your thoughts on the Rockford Fosgate MP100 mini amp? Oh, are those MP those little things? Are those 100, 100, the 100 times one mini amps? Are those the little guys? The little gray ones that we tested that use the, um, you know, two in a box. They're, they don't have a power and ground. They use the, uh, uh, they lower the resistance. I don't remember. I don't remember, I can just man. tell you I'm we've never say. tested a bad Rockford product. If it's what I'm thinking about, they actually work and they were cool. 
Yeah. Um, let's look it up. Look it up. Put M MP. Look, look that up. I want to make sure we're talking about the right thing. What MP. Was it was a uh, PM 100 times one mini amp. Um, what is? Hold on. I saw. What's your opinion? Uh, opinions on the kicker VX. I think they are black with blue stitching. Yes, yeah, that's the marine amplifier. Is it the little guy? Yeah, that's the little one. Oh yeah, those things actually work. We did a review on those. If you go to our kicker uh, playlist on YouTube, you can see if the review. If you go to a Rockford playlist. If you go to the Rockford playlist on YouTube. What did I say, kicker? kicker. If you go to the Rockford playlist on YouTube, we did review those little mini amplifiers. They do actually work. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Yes, that's those. Thank you, Bill. Um, so, yes, the blue line kicker stuff is awesome stuff. Yeah. As we've said before, we're very excited about the product. Correct. We're starting to do a little bit of testing on it. Mm -hmm. We have the Q class amplifier in that we're going to play with. Um, pretty much anything that has a DSP amplifier in it, we want to get our hands on. Yeah. Um, we got to, I got to look at the Vorza software this weekend. Even though I just promised, How hey, Lori, what's up? We were just hey, talking Lori. about kicker. Thank yeah. you, Lori. Um, it's really what do you cool. Think? It's really, uh, well, okay, I don't, want, I don't want to say what I told you, but um, yeah, it's a really cool software for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah, okay. so we got to, uh, <clears throat> we'll talk about, I won't go there, because we'll talk about Knowledge Fest more on Saturday, like I promised, but uh, how many installs do you guys do a week? Just curious. So it's not necessarily the quantity of installs we do, it's the type of installs we're doing. So for example, this car here is a Porsche. Uh, basically, it's getting a new radio, a uh, four-channel amplifier, mm -hmm. and all new speakers. Yep. We worked on it all day today. Granted, he got here at 11, so we lost like a lot of time in the morning. We mm -hmm. could have had to work on it, which mm -hmm. so it's probably it would have been a whole day, maybe an hour or two tomorrow. So it, it kind of screwed up our, our thing there. Mm -hmm. But it just depends <clears throat> what we're doing. So you know, everything takes a certain amount of time, and as long as the Lego pieces of product we have to install work out throughout the day. I'm not a hit the ground running, I need to slam things out because I'm making money. I, I, no. You know, if you want it done, you want it done right, done, you know, what does the phrase go, pick cheap, fast, or good? Hey, what's up, Luis from two. Portugal? So, yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, or, you know, so, you want uh, a great install, you want a cheap price, you want a great product. Hey, uh, pick two. Yes, Mike, we, we have the Kicker Tents RT, so... Comp RTs? If, yes, if you actually want those, you can call Paul at the store, um, and he will give you the price for those. So, Keith, when you're asking in Pioneer Kennel, which is the best for tuning? What Which model is best out for that and tuning? Uh, playing Android Auto. Okay, Android Auto is universal on all radios. It doesn't matter what the radio is, Android sets a certain criteria. Each radio that is Android Auto and or Apple CarPlay has to meet that criteria so mm -hmm. that the user interface and the reaction is identical. So that it doesn't matter whether you're using a Kenwood, a Pioneer, an Alpine, or a factory Ford Raider, Android Auto has to work the same and so does CarPlay. So that isn't the factor that you want to look at. What mm -hmm. you want to look at <coughs> is the other thing as far as tunability. They're both going to have 13 band EQs. That's it. They both have 13 band EQs. Yep. They both have time correction. They both have basically the same crossovers. Mm -hmm. uh, the one thing Kenwood has over Pioneer is that they do have a attenuation for the treble output or the tweeter output on the crossover. It's but right. Pioneer has <clears throat> auto EQ. Now, but Kenwood has some sound features. So if you go, they have like uh, elevation for the sound, they mm -hmm. have restore, they have some of those things. And some of those things are nice because they make it real easy to get a really good sound fast because you're like, you know, you could just go into that one page and you could hit like loudness and you can hit elevation and you can hit restore and it's like sound goes up, sound moves out and it sounds good. It's fast, you know. Um, they make the crossover a little bit easier because they just put up pictures. You just say, I have a 10 inch woofer, I have a six and a half in the door and I have a six by nine. And they're just, they just set up general crossover points. So mm -hmm. if, if you need a learning curve, meaning, I'm sorry, I'm tired, man, dude, we got like 12 hours of sleep yeah, but in like four days. Yeah. So if <clears throat> you need to be able to get up and running fast and you're like, I don't understand a 13 band EQ, what do you mean by crossover? They have, Kenwood does make it a little bit easier just to hit the door running and get something set up and playing and sounding pretty decent. Yep. And then you can start to figure it out and go back and play with it. Whereas Pioneer is just, here you go. All right, Mike. But they do have That's the auto cool, set man. Up, so. All um, right, so um, what, will, what would I need to install a subwoofer on a 2013 Ram 2500, four doors with the factory 8.4 touchscreen radio? You can answer that. I wasn't listening. I'm not gonna lie. 
All right. What would I need to install a subwoofer? Yes. Okay. On the 2013. 2013. Ram 2500. Yes. Okay. What do I need to install a subwoofer and a 2013 uh, Dodge Ram? Yes. Uh, with the 8.4 touchscreen radio. 8.4 inch touchscreen radio and a Dodge Ram. Unfortunately right now you're gonna have to use a high level to low level adapter and I said the keywords right now. So it's not a big deal you're gonna tap into the front speakers and that's yeah. gonna give you the subwoofer output. I will tell you right now that the factory radio clips fast okay so make sure you use a good high level to low level adapter. And then I'm gonna tell you it's gonna have bass roll off like you're not gonna believe. At that point, you might wanna look at a audio control LC2i because it has AccuBase, which is designed to help you fix bass roll off. Yep. Now, with that in mind, the summertime is gonna be an interesting time of the year for cool things like 8.4 inch Dodge radios. Maybe fall. Yeah. Yep. When that time rolls around, we're gonna see these cool things that might be able to help you. Yep. And that's well, about all I can say on that because they've asked me not to talk about it further. Yeah. All right. So Lori asked, uh, how was Indy? Indy was amazing and I'm still upset you guys weren't there. Yeah. But yeah. it was freaking cool. Um, so the first the Friday that we get there. We're not going to talk about it more. No. I'll, no. Because. Well, yeah, that's true. I do we're have gonna... to call you, Lori. So, or you could call me sometime this week because we need to talk. I got, yeah. I got some stuff for you. Um, some swag. Um. Yeah, oh, nice. Yeah, I know, Good right? You. Yeah, well, I, I, I just, I've, we've been so crazy with the show and leaving and whatnot. I, I meant to get back with her and I haven't been able to. But uh, hello from, yeah. Thanks for the stickers. You're welcome, Wes. Um, all right. Okay. So there was, there was a question I wanted to answer. Hold on. Let me go back and see if I can find it real quick. <clears throat> um, uh, how's it going? How are those component kickers? Phenomenal. Um, how? Are you? Oh, die. Very tired. Uh, they were asking about, okay, so the question was uh, fast rings. Um, the roadkill fast rings um, or, okay, brand really doesn't matter when it comes to the foam around the speakers, okay? I, I don't care who's you buy, just so you put something there. If you want to get the new Metra silicone filled goofy ones that they make, and I only use goofy as just a very generic description term, they're very nice. Um, those work. Uh, okay, I find it. Yeah. And the... Fast rings work great. There's actually a company that was there this weekend that was, they have another one that was pretty cool too. Um, where did I put that? Did I set it on your desk? I'm just gonna give them a shout out because I got to play with it. Now these guys set their stuff up kind Sound of- Sound Okay, this is a company called Sound- Matt. Sound Matt? Yeah. Sound oh yeah, Sound Matt at SQL Audio. So it's just, just turn around so it's big letters in the back. Yeah, but it's gonna be it's gonna be re it's reversed. We understand, but you guys can read the letters. It's called Sound Mat. You can find them at Sound S SQL Audio. And what they make is they make just a strip. The box comes with two strips for like twenty bucks. It's just a closed cell foam, and it's really neat. We filmed it. We'll sh you'll you'll see it soon. Um, it's something I want to pick up and get get my hands on. Get the amp pro, it's the factory amplifier and the dot. If it is an 8.4 inch with the factory amplifier, then yes, you can get an amp pro for it. If it's the 8.4 inch without the factory amplifier, then no, you can't yeah. get an amp pro. So that is also, yeah. When wow. did you guys get back? We got back yesterday at seven o'clock. Seven o'clock, yeah. Um, do you sell a kit for screen mirroring in a 2008 Toyota Camry? No, no. No. Um, Hello guys. So how many cars piled up you were gone? We gave Paul about a month and a half of advance notice that we weren't going to be here, so there really wasn't anything that piled up per se. Most of our cars are done by appointment only, mm -hmm. so we, you know, there's very few things that just show up and get done anymore. Granted, there are things that just show up and get done. Yeah. Um, but they you know, normally, like, they are appointments. They're usually appointments. Yeah. And if something just shows up, if we have time, we get it done. It's usually like a radio or something like that. It's towards the end of the day. Although, apparently, somebody called while we were gone. And Paul was like, yeah, we're about two weeks out. And he wasn't happy about that. So he left us a one-star Google review. That was kind of cool and nice <laughs> of him. Hopefully, I'll never run into that guy. Um, <laughs> Any strategies on making a backup camera on a 2012 Rogue S work on an aftermarket, no, no harness, harness adapter it. that I can find? Yeah, it's a six volt camera. Have you tried Skosh and or Metra online.com? Yeah. I believe it's just the generic Nissan one that they use. So I, it, there was nothing special about it. 
But we do have videos showing you how to retain your factory backup camera. It's the same process. There's essentially going to be four wires. Okay. Two of them are going to be power and two of them are going to be signal. What you need to find is the power first. Those are the easiest, which we showed you in the video. You need a digital multimeter. Once you find those, which is typically going to be six volts, you're going to need your factory radio there so you can find those. Once you find those two, then it's going to be real easy to find the other two. Um, okay, did you check uh, Metro booth? I never went to the Metro booth. No, I, I, I was like... We spent that one night hanging out and talking with those guys, yeah. but I never <clears throat> went to the booth. Okay, so because Eric has uh, thoughts on the Metro kit for the uh, non amplified 2015 Ford Fusion. I honestly didn't get over to the booth. We walked through there real quick, I think, when we shot the video, but other than that, it kind of took... We I never went back. But yeah. what we did see was PAC's new F-150 kit, kit use, use for it, the yeah. uh for the big seven inch screen it has okay. a little touch screen down below that they're coming out with so they had actually one of those there uh What's showing up, what it's going to look like and how it's going to work so that was yeah. really cool so the f-150 guys that want to get rid of that eight inch screen that's yeah. a piece of crap uh will soon be soon be available uh how do you know so much about car audio i started car audio back in the summer july or august of 1990 i took my first job working at a company called ave car stereo and i proceeded to work there for 21 years doing everything from cleaning the bathrooms to managing the website installation manager head fabricator what's our rubber loathly installer sales guy so i've done everything at that one store and, and then i left because 21 years seemed like it was enough and they didn't give me my gold Rolex at 20 years. And then I came here and opened this install bay with Paul. Paul is the owner. We're just the cool slackies in the back that, uh, <laughs> you know, put stuff in cars. And in order to make it fun so that I don't lose my mind, we decided to start a cool YouTube channel and Facebook and whatnot so that we can talk to you guys and possibly make because your lives we a little off. better. Because after spending six like days a week with him... We needed something else to do. Like and something like talking to Ada there at Absolute Audio yeah, in Rockville, yeah. Maryland seemed like the yeah. right thing to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or talking to Fro out at Stereo Is Kings Stereo in Portland, Oregon. Oregon. Yeah. Four stores. And you yeah. can also find them on YouTube. At oh, but I don't, I don't know if you... Uh, um, that was awesome. Thank you for the shirt, by the way. That was or, awesome uh, to You can talk find the shirt at uh, Teespring slash store slash five star. Yeah. Awesome yeah. to talk to who? To Ada. Yeah. Yes, it was awesome yeah. to talk to Ada because he's Ada. Anyway... I want to get a button that says that. Uh, what? <laughs> like the Staples button? Because I'm at it! Anyways. Okay. Absolute yeah. Electronics. I hope I said that. If I didn't, I'm sorry. Absolute Adelaide. Electronics. That's right. Yeah. Uh, all right. Hey, guys. What amp do you recommend to power some Focal K2s in the front and a pair of Focal KRSs in the rear? Good question, Jordan. And I will answer that with something that sounds good at 2 ohms because those are going to be 2 ohm speakers. Yeah. An amplifier that we've used in the past that has worked phenomenal with that yeah. is the Audio Control 4.800. Yeah. Now they make two versions of the 4.800. They make the D, which is going to have the DM processor built into it, mm -hmm. 31 bands of equalization for each channel, as well as two channels of output to go into a subwoofer amplifier, all controlled with crossovers, time correction, independent level control for each channel. Or if you already have something that yeah. has all that cool stuff in it, you can get the <clears throat> LC version of it. The yeah. LC version is going to be just power. Yep. Both of those amplifiers were designed to operate at 2 ohms. Now, when I say that, there's a difference because a lot of amplifiers are designed to work at 4 ohms, but by some pure coincidence, will work at 2 ohms. They'll give you a crappy 2 ohm rating. Now, Class D amplifiers typically don't like being run at 2 ohms. However, you can design an amplifier to work at 2 ohms, and it will sound good, and then... Hey, if it can work at 2 ohms, it will most definitely work at 4 ohms. Right. Audio Control kind of took that approach. Just a thought. Now, if you want something that is even more exciting and you want to get, let's say, possibly an AB class amplifier because you're looking at maximum sound potential, they could pick up something like a 5 channel amplifier or a 4 channel amplifier that will work. Uh, something on the smaller side would be going with like a Morel. Uh, four channel amplifier or possibly the five channel amplifier and then run a small subwoofer with it You also have the Voce 5.1, which is really nice Yeah, but okay. I mean you're looking at Focals, so uh, Why not um, if you also want something and you want to stick with the family of Focal, which is Orca You could check out the Moscone amplifiers in which of course they have some really 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 amazing Amplifiers in the Moscone lineup. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of stuff to check. Yeah they have <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh, uh, I'm surprised he's home. He must have drove straight through. Do you're um, home already? Um, 
How do you connect an eight channel amp to six channels of RC output? That is a wonderful question. So the thought process <clears throat> is simple. Most of the time, I know, and, and I'm with you, Fidel, it's kind of one of those things, why would you put six channels of input with eight channels of output? And the reason is simple. The idea behind the eight channel amplifier is usually something like we're gonna do a tweeter, a mid-range, a rear speaker, and possibly bridge those for sub, or we're gonna do tweeter mid-range, tweeter mid-range, or we're gonna do tweeter mid-range mid-bass, possibly a center channel, and or a sub. What's gonna feed that though is typically just a left and right signal. Or if you have to do summing, if the amplifier has some summing capability, really what they're giving you is six channels to get a full signal left and right. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why six channels seems to be adequate is because most aftermarket stereos just have six channels of output, front, wow. rear, and some form of a sub. So it's kind of be, that's what they're doing. Ran into the same problem when we were hooking up uh, the most recent uh, Camaro. Mm -hmm. We did an audio control DM810. There again, most high-end, um, processors or DSPs are going to be eight channels of input. Even though they have 10 channels, possibly 12 channels of output, most of them only have eight channels of input. And why that became a problem, because in that particular car, we had a center channel. You can do the math. I'm just going to point out the channels. We had a center channel. We had front tweeters. We had front mid-range. We had mirror rid rear mid-range. And then yeah. we had a rear left and right mid-base mid in the back. It wasn't a true subwoofer. So, we didn't have enough channels on an 810. That was like nine channels of sound. We had eight channels of input. So what that meant is that we had to lose the rear mid bass, which was okay because we weren't gonna use them anyways. But yeah. in certain situations, that might have been a problem. However, when you're summing, a lot of the times you just want the DSP to handle everything. So what you really need going into a DSP is just a left and a right. You don't necessarily need front and rear yep. or subwoofer because the DSP <laughs> is going to create those things for you. A lot of DSPs have what are called uh, DRCs or controllers that allow you to do all the stuff from the actual controller, such as turn up and down the subwoofer and or adjust balance of fader done in the DSP processor because there again, it's a surround system. When you're at home listening to surround sound, you don't constantly turn up and down the rear speakers. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, you get it set the way you like, center, left, right, left, right, and an active sub in the corner, and you might just turn up and down the main volume and or a little bit subwoofer depending on your wife at home and when she's yelling at you. She might just walk out and turn the whole amplifier off altogether and be like, I'm trying to sleep and these are banging my wall. I can't relate, I'm just saying, it might be possible, wink. Anyways, hope that answers that question. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's Combat. true. Jason, Jason is right. Uh, the illusion, the illusion, uh, three <laughs> inches, awesome. Yep. I love that answer, Sean. Sean, you hit that right. It. It's two for front and six for rear fill, baby. Hey, there you go. Okay. <laughs> Puerto Rico yeah. present. What's, What's going up? on, man? Uh, okay, what else you got for me? Uh, another, another pile right, up. Let's see. Uh, I think people stop typing when I give the really long answers because yeah. they're like. Yep. This I'm is sorry. Gonna be long. This is gonna be long. Uh, uh, oh, you got Jessica one? Saying, okay. Hey guys, my husband is gonna want. My husband and I we're gonna take a trip to Florida this summer. Hope to meet you guys. We yeah. hope to meet you too. Yeah. Uh, my wife says she'll cut the answers. <laughs> now I'm just gonna tease something here since we have kind of okay. a, uh, okay. a moment. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. You got a question? Yes. Okay, then I'm gonna right. tease it. I'll wait to tease. Hey guys. Um, Watching from Australia. Cut the wires. Looking for SQ 6x9 components for yes, an F-150. Okay. What do you suggest? 6x9 components for an F-150. Now we did talk about this a little bit at the beginning, so I'll just rehash it real quick. There's a bunch of companies that have 6x9 components now. Morel has a set of 6x9 components. Uh, Focal has the integration 6x9 components. Audison has the brand new Prima 6x9 components. Mm -hmm. Alpine is making three pairs of 6x9 components. Yes. Kenwood just got in the game with their 6x9 uh, component systems mm -hmm. where you get either a 3.5 coaxial or a 2.5 inch mid-range along with the 6x9. Yep. So there's a ton of 6x9 components to choose from. Basically what you want to do is figure out which one is your power needs and rock it from there. Yep. What's up mom? How's it going? Hi. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Um, What's the best signing car you dudes heard at K-Fest? Why do you want to put me on the spot like that? Yes. Um, RC, yes. Uh, Dean is doing the, all the editing on Hearts the videos. Yeah. Everything. On everything. I edit all the videos. Yep. Do, you guys, do you guys do your own editing on the videos? Yeah. So every night after That's we leave here. Sorry, RC. So every night after we leave here, 
uh, which is 6.30 between 7 tonight. Obviously, we're a little late. Saturday, we're a little late. I go home. This video, of course, gets posted on Tuesday, much to everyone's dismay uh, for YouTube. Usually, there's a Monday video on YouTube as well that I edit either Saturday night or Sunday night, depending on how my weekend goes. So then it's Tuesday night edit, Wednesday night edit, Thursday night edit, and then I try to take Friday night off because at that point, I've been up usually to about two to three o'clock every night up to that point because mm -hmm. i usually have to start editing between nine and ten o'clock and that's it so there's no long editing process because we turn out we try to turn out four unique videos a week along with this one this one even though it's like filmed and whatnot this one still takes only it takes about a half hour to edit this and it takes about two hours to do the import and export so it's still a lot of time going on here all right pioneer 9601 digital amplifier in your video, you say the bass control has to be plugged in. Why? What, is the, what was the question? The um, 9601. Oh, the Pioneer. Why? Yeah, the bass knob. So it's not a bass knob on the Pioneer amplifiers. It's actually a bass boost What's that, controlled Seth? on the amplifier. So if you don't want any bass boost, okay, go ahead and turn it down. It's like a bass EQ, though. So if you're perfectly fine with the flat bass response you get out of it, leave it unplugged. It's no big deal. However, if you'd like a little extra to your music, Plug it in, turn it up, and you'll see what it does. And you'll be like, oh crap, that's pretty impressive. Yep. Now, if you're using some form of other EQ that has bass boost built into it, totally not necessary. It's okay, leave it out. But if you don't have that, plug it in. You'll be like, wow, that's pretty cool. Yep, uh, Dion, uh, Ada is right. So, yep. What did you, you say? Can, uh, he, he can use the Ida link. Uh, Oh, okay, that's sad cool. one for yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, if Addis says something, just just go for it because he was there. Um, uh, he, okay. Well, he's got a shop. Abs yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, not me. Yes. Uh, oh, and, and I also run, of course. So I only read once while we were gone this weekend because it was a way too cold. B, I can't stand running on a treadmill. Where where do you run? I ran inside. I ran hotel. Thursday night so in the hotel count. for 4.3 miles. It doesn't and count. And it was pure freaking torture. So. Dude, okay, so mm. we went to bed around... We're what? not going to talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. Late. We're going to talk about it on Saturday. We're going to talk about it, it on Saturday. Matter. I want to answer these guys' questions. Uh, Seth from P SP Audio here. What's up, Seth? What's, What's up, fellas? On, hey, Aaron. How's it going? Um, okay. Going back. There was a Durango question. Ooh, there were some kits coming out from um, iData that we got to see. Uh, one of the betas, they had some plastic sitting on the counter, yeah. so they had the new Camaro kit sitting on the counter, which our boy Mark Rutledge is going to send me one as soon as they're actually ready for prime time, because all they had was the plastic. They didn't have the software, but it's a really slick-looking kit. It doesn't have the knobs, but it's got all buttons, and it's all right. tied up in the... Ooh, sexy. Have you ever worked on a 2014 Tease. or newer Durango? Ah, have we? Yes. We put an amp in there. That's really all we've done. We're working... Yeah. We just put an amp in there. It, you know, most of those, no. Um, however, if you do have the premium sound system in it, you can do an amp pro in it. So that's kind of nice. And or wait till what we talked about at the beginning of the show is that if it has the 8.4-inch touchscreen, ooh, and it hey doesn't guys, have premium sound. Hey, guys, watching from Australia. Fun Thank you, that. man. GG's, my wife would kill me if I spent that much time Okay, what is say data link? What's that? What is like data link? I data link is... Thanks, Adam. What is iDataLink? Okay, iDataLink.com is a place they make the AR or the RR Maestro. It's very similar to the pack harnesses you see us use mm -hmm. and that they're designed to interface with the either adding a radio in, talk to the factory car so that you can get all the cool data into the radio, and or if you're keeping the radio and you want to add an amplifier if the car is compatible, you can thus turn the factory radio system into a preamp to go to another amplifier. So what did they sell? That's what they sell. That's it? Those two pieces. Okay. And if you're in an alarms, they sell a bunch of stuff for alarms, but, but we don't have, do those. Um, what? They have dash kits. They have dash kits. Well, there okay. again, it's, it's uh, okay. I data dash kits. Uh, okay, Mark. So funny you should mention that. Sue must have patience of a saint. She does have patience of a saint. There's no doubt about it. So what had happened originally, Mark, is I, I we have an office in the house where all our stuff is, all the computers and the desks and all that fun stuff. Yeah. And I would sit out there and I would edit. And they'd be like, when are you coming? When are you coming? I'm not coming. And they would get pissed. So knobs. <laughs> um, so what happened was, is I had to go out buy a laptop. So at nighttime when I'm editing, What's I that, sit John? out there in the living room with them with my headphones on, sitting next, usually if Haley's home, she'll sit next to me. Otherwise, I'll just sit there anyways and Sue sits next to me. Mm -hmm. And um, they'll watch TV. 
I'll sit there every now and then. I'll just have one headphone on so and I'll, awesome. I'll edit <laughs> and um, you know. So I sit at a card table now instead of a nice desk. Sit at the couch. So yay, fun. And then you know they go to bed and I have to just sit there by myself. Yep. And that's when I watch the velocity stuff, or I'm sorry, what Motor Trend Channel. All right. So all right. So problems with the Pioneer AVIC 20. Uh, I'm sorry, 7200. When powering it up. I have to press the hold. I have to press and hold the nav button to gain control. To gain control. What's the red wire connected to? Is the car is it turning on and off with the car? I guess would be the question. Um, so make sure that you have everything connected <coughs> properly. Yellow is a constant 12 volts. Red is key, meaning when you turn the key off, the red wire goes dead. That's what you need to check first. That that would be. Uh, is it all right? Uh, do you do a video on how to tune an audio control 4100? Oh, uh, they don't even make that anymore. Uh, okay, here we go. Will an AGM battery allow me to play my stereo longer with the ignition off? It doesn't matter what type of battery you have as, no. as far as allowing your system to play longer with the bat with the car off. It has nothing to do with the type of battery you're using, mm -hmm. it has to do with how much amperage is being drawn from said battery. So it's a simple equation. If you're drawing 100 amps of current and your battery is, you know, so big, mm -hmm. it's going to die faster. The bigger battery break you have with the more amperage, the longer it will last. It doesn't matter what the plates are or, or whether it's an AGM, whether it's a dry cell, whether it's a lead acid. That doesn't matter. It's how big is the battery and what is it you're trying to draw off of it. Think of a, any portable device you have. There's a lifespan and how long that can last. Look at a smartphone. What's the biggest thing they keep upping in the size of a smartphone? The battery life. That's why everyone was, you know, like everyone wants to make these big phones. The bigger the phone, the bigger the battery they can put in it, the longer it will last. That's all it comes down to. Size of battery bank equals length of playtime. That's it. That's it. So if you want to sit in your parking lot and play your stereo for an hour, you have to figure out first how much amperage are you drawing and then how much battery do you need to allow that to happen. <clears throat> That's it. That's how that works. Um, All right. I don't have an audio control 4100i. I don't know if Jeff has, still has one of those. He but has it? I don't know. Wow. Um, All right. Hey, from how, Ohio. How can I get my Android phone to screen mirror on my touch screen on a 2014 Durango? Who makes the um, so when it comes interface? To, uh, that's a BCI 41. BCI 41. Screen share. You'd have to get a BCI 41, uh -huh. which is the um, backup camera interface, uh -huh. and then you'd have to use the aux jack as the input. That'd be the only way you could do that. So and then from there, pack you BCI get... 41 you could use for your video. Then you're going to have to get an iSimple uh, Media, Media Links, Links cable, which is going to be the HDMI adapter. Then you have to get an HDMI cable. Then you have to get the HDMI to whatever type of phone you're using. I have one. I'll send it to you. Thanks, Ada. Who? <laughs> he has a 41 audio control. 41. Oh, really? Right. Ah, nice, <gasps> Thanks, man. Um, Sean, what's up, Big Red? If I do a Pioneer radio along with a DSP, would I set RCA network or standard? Standard. You always do standard because the DSP. Is going to it just needs a D if you're doing a DSP like we said earlier you just need a left and a right everything else will be done um, all right I and, and dude you can always just come and talk to me I mean, all know. right all right so okay so Randy say hi from Ohio I have a 2018 f-150 front speakers are blown what do you recommend for that all right before I answer that one it says ah, I want to read this one um, I'll re as far as the Ford f-150 goes it, it's a six by nine so there again, the six by nines we talked about like 10 minutes ago, any one of those would be perfect to go in there. If you're gonna just use the radio deck power, um, probably maybe some S types. And yeah, probably the S types would, would work off of deck power really well. They don't need a lot of power. If you're gonna add an amp, go up to the R types or any of the other ones we talked about. Now the question was, I have a Rockford Power T750BD that's blowing my fuses every time I plug it in. Even with no load, power and ground, okay are okay because because this moves uh because the same power and ground split off to my t400 i suspect that the sub blew and did something to the amp what do you guys think aaron you're 100 correct the amplifier is going to need to go back in for service 
Basically, the way the uh, Rockford Fosgate works is they have a bunch of cool circuitry built into it that's supposed to prevent that from happening. However, sometimes bad things do occur. And if you're plugging the amplifier in, power, ground, or remote, and every time it turns on, it blows the fuse, something internally has died. So then it will have to go back. So unfortunately, your guess was right. I would send it back for repair. Be good to go. Um, hey, from Oklahoma. Did what's you going on? To Shun? Uh, yes. Uh, awesome, thanks. I had a customer ask. Okay. Oh, well, in that case, I was going to say, you have a pioneer. All right, what's it say? Okay, so what's my best option for CarPlay in a Honda Core LX 2014? Okay, sorry. What's my best? Uh, my best 2014. Yeah. Oof. Whoa. That's that it's funky dash that sucks. Okay, so. No, but just for yeah, the car play, it depends. Well, so. there is nothing for that. You're going to have to replace the radio because there's no option to put a car play into the factory radio right now. It just doesn't exist. Um, you have two options, really. The first option is to get the metric kit and buy an aftermarket radio. You can find the kit at metroonline.com. That's a hit or miss on the kit. I'm going to tell you right now. I'm not a big fan of the kit. Adam will tell you he loves the kit. I think he's lying, but just okay. <laughs> Joking. Um, the other option is to do what a lot of people do, is they buy the Skosh kit, which is just the trim bezel. They take the factory radio, they shave it down, they hack it up, they stick it in the glove box. Or they go on to eBay and they find a used version of the radio and they stick it in the glove box. Uh, wow. And then you use the Skosh kit and you just put your aftermarket radio in there. All right, how to bypass what? See ya, Mike. Okay, so how to bypass the Bose amplifier in the 2012 Impala for speaker upgrade plus amp? So, there is the new AP, APHGM02. Basically, go to. Uh, hold on. What year is it? Uh, it's a 2000... 2012? No, it's a 2014? No, All right, this on. should work. Um, so there's an APH GM02, okay? And this is, this is pretty much a universal... Yeah, yeah. This is pretty much a universal harness, so what I would suggest doing is going to pack and looking up that part number. Then, go to Car Stereo Labs playlist and find where we put the Alpine... PXE 0850S in yeah. the car and look at the, that's a part one and two, look at part one. We use that harness, repin it to plug into the factory harness. See if those plugs look like your plugs. If they do, follow what we did in that video and you'll be all set and ready to go. That McNulty, plastic are nice in the Metro core. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. Well, like, like, like everybody knows, Dean doesn't like Metra, so. I love Metra. You don't love Metra. I love Metra with all my heart. They're great guys. We had a great talk with them in the lobby. Oh, it was okay, wonderful. Yeah. Those were Metra guys. Yeah. That's the guy that runs the school, and that's the guy that was having No, no, I, that's fine, but. They were like, wonderful people to talk to. Okay. I, they, you know, hey, there's, there's always somebody behind the company. You have to remember that, and those people could be great. And they were. They were great guys. I had a lot of fun talking with them. I just didn't know who they were with until the end of the night. Um, All right, let's I'll send see. you some snow. You don't have to, Randy. We actually got to see snow uh, yesterday. So we, we, we had two hours of snow while we were there. So we're good on snow. I'm tapped out. I, I fit my quota for the, for the time. The Metro Core Kit works just need to be up to date. And then, well, I didn't know, future-proof maybe? Like, like up to date from like six months from now? I mean, I'm joking. I'm joking. Um, Okay, what do you got? Is there, is okay, there what so I'm... the T400.4 can be... Oh, integrate. Can the rear... What? I was, I was looking at something else. Uh, Sorry. Hang on. Right here. Uh, can the rear channel bridge for 200 watts power the entire sub? Uh, like the JLW0 in the box? If it's a 4 ohm load... It can power a sub yeah. all day long. Yeah. So it just has to be a forum load. It's going to be, what, 200 watts for a sub. So as long as you have a sub that it can power, I mean. It has to be, yeah. I don't know what's the GL. Uh, that's just the wattage. Well, I mean. That's, okay. that's, but that's the punch. Well, I mean, so we used. We have the punch. 
four, this, 400 point four. This little guy here, the PRB 400 times 4D, this is the, the baby brother to that. This is what we put in Fernando's car to power bridge. the P28 bridge. That's three and, channel mode. It's three channel mode. Yeah. If this little guy can do it, the bigger brother has no problems. So look how tiny that is. Isn't that silly? It's amazing how much power this puts out. Okay. I love foldable mirrors. Um, do you guys like Focal speakers? I love them. Ron, Focal. to show you how much we like Focal speakers, go back about two weeks and look for the show that had the guy named Nick Wingate on it. He's the head trainer for Focal. Yep. That's that. Um, porter for two Rockford P2s. I would port a box. That would be awesome for sure. Those sound great. Uh, someone said nav tools. I'm out. <laughs> nav tools? Who said nav, nav tools? Tool. I, it was Nav TV. No one said Nav Tools. Ooh, no, gross. Don't, nav don't go to Nav Tools. Somebody say Nav Tools. Oh, for the Honda? Ooh, yeah, don't do that. No. Um, Does Nav Tool really work for a CarPlay interface? Yeah, somebody say Nav Tool. Oh, no, no. I will never do a piece by those people ever. Never. You gotta understand something. In order for it to be. In order for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto to work and, and work correctly, as we said at the beginning of the mm -hmm. show, we were talking about it has to be certified by both those companies or that's by criteria that's met. Right now, there is no aftermarket company that has certification from either one of those companies for it to work 100%. They don't have it. Now, just like you can jailbreak a phone, yeah. you can jailbreak an interface and do whatever you want with it. Yeah. The problem is it's jailbroken. And anyone that's ever jailbroken a phone and try to take it back and have it's it fixed, broken now, <laughs> not gonna happen. So, Amen. never. There ever. you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's that. Trader or trader or more. Relax. No, no, uh, no, no, no. no. Dean is like, yeah, no. Uh, yeah, two hundred hours. Trader to, to the jail. Why am I Ten. trying to? Look, I love everybody's brand, man. Part of the okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump script here for a minute just to to, to put you at ease there, Christian. Um, <laughs> Part of the goal for us going to Knowledge Fest this year was that we wanted to talk to vendors that we don't deal with on a daily basis. We went out to eat with the guy from um, Arc Audio. Had a great time with them talking about their new products that they have because I've done a lot of research on it and I was interested in it. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time uh, just talking with all kinds of vendors that we don't normally talk with. Also spent a lot of time talking with the vendors we do deal with. but. You know, the idea is to, What's that, Luis? we wanted to learn and, and talk to these guys and get the opportunity to play with some of their products. And by the way, that was awesome, awesome time, spending time with uh, McNulty uh, this weekend, just like crazy, that was awesome. You got a bromance going on? Are you I... jealous? No, no okay. you can go hang with him anytime you want. He's way easier to hug than me. Um, I'm sure folk cows sound very nice. They do sound very nice. As a matter of fact, while we were there, well, I'm not going to spoil it. No, I'm going to spoil it. We got to hear oh a Mustang that had the M in them, the Utopia M's. M's. Yeah. yeah. But we also got to hear a bunch of other stuff, too. Like, I said, what was the favorite car we had? Mm, mm. I don't know. But somebody said they actually, they, um, they watched the Addis car and they, um, oh, there you go. Around. That, that was awesome. That was and, my favorite yep. car. It was Addis. That car is awesome. car is some of the best. Yeah, there you go. See you later, people. Uh, and I was going to tease it earlier. All right, so you guys have seen this tool plenty of times on the show. Hold Which on, one? let me grab it. This is our polarity tester that we use. Okay. We ordered a bunch of these. So <laughs> I'm only teasing this right now because we got to get cool five star stickers made to go on here in the next couple weeks. But what we're going to do is we're going to be giving some of these away to you guys because we appreciate you guys so much. So we bought a bunch of these. So we're going to have a giveaway. I don't know how we're going to do the giveaway yet, but you guys <laughs> are going to get some of these, so that ought to be fun. No, uh, dude, I was waiting for you, like, and then you're running around everywhere, I'm oh, like, where is that at? That is and then, like, everywhere, everywhere. Now, the other thing, too, that I'm going to do is I'm going to pick one of you guys tonight, because Rockford was nice enough to give me a pair of their cheap sunglasses. I feel like ZZ Top, right here. Boom, look at that. What can you Rockford just say? Foss, get on the side. What can you just say? Just a pair of uh, sunglasses. Cause ZZ Top has a song called Cheap Sunglasses. Okay. It's a good song. You've never okay. heard it? No, no. Listen to it on the way home. Okay. Anyways, one of you guys are going to get these tonight. I'm just going to pick somebody random when I get home and uh, I'm going to have Sue reach out to you. Mail it. And she's going to mail you these. So Thank one of you guys not. is getting these tonight. If you're watching this tomorrow on YouTube, which would be today, 
You guys aren't going to be qualified for this. It's only going to be the Facebook people. So I'm sorry. We'll do something else, you know, on Saturday maybe. Um, but yeah, somebody's going to win those. Don't know how. Free, so well, it's good. I'm just going to pick somebody. So if you've asked a question, it's probably the easiest way to get them. Well, that is going to be the only way to get them if you ask a question because that's all I'm going to see is that. Uh, but we're going to figure out what we're going to do for the polarity checkers. I don't know yet, but you guys, yeah. I got a bunch of them, so we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. Dude, I'm, I'm too young. To I'm know too you young, young. very young. You're you know, I'm just like young. Young. Are you hung or young? What I'm is it? I'm tired. Young, hung. Young, young yeah, has I'm... a Y. Uh, <laughs> awesome, cheap oh, sunglasses. No. This is really what freaked her out was the cheap sunglasses. Doo, 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 doo. Yeah. Okay. Hey, it's John. What's up, John? Thanks for being on point, man. When I needed that price sheet, man, that was awesome. That was oh, freaking really? silly. Yeah, because we were in. There again, I know, I don't want to talk about it. We were in the illusion meeting uh, with Nick talking, and I was like, we're both sitting there going, <sighs> and uh, I was like, send me the price sheet, send me the price sheet. Um, uh, damn, I just bought a polarity checker. That's okay, man. It's okay. You possibly wouldn't have to at some point. Uh, <laughs> all right, ZZ Top. There you go. Um, uh, polarity test, remember I reversed my, uh, yep, positive and negative, which gave me low output. That will do that. It's a scary thing. Um, no. one hung low. Sorry. Sorry. Ah, ha, I meant one hung low. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, what, what's, what do you got here? We got a um, question? Oh, wait, everyone's just asking questions so they can win the free sunglasses. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Rock for sunglasses, I have a Ford Rock Ford. Oh, dang, that was good. It's going to be totally random. I might let Haley do it. I think I'm going to let Haley do it. Haley's going to... Balance versus unbalanced Sicario. Does it mean... Uh, does it even apply? <laughs> you know, that's a funny question you should ask. Um, and I, it just <laughs> lost. Um, Wait, so, say, I promise to, to stop asking for the Dane uh, DSP review. Uh, it, yeah, if you don't ask for it, it probably <laughs> happened. Uh, that's what he asked. Uh, it was nice meeting you at the Knowledge Fest as well. Um... Balanced on balance in the car stereo world basically is the difference between RCA and the high level input. That's that's the easiest way to think of it. Phoenix Gold is really one of the few companies that still use that thing that say balance and on balance. So when we act, actually get around to the T3i review of those amplifiers we have, they call it balance and on balance. Mm -hmm. And they went ahead and created this big long paper that explains the difference between the two. When we get to that point, we're going to go ahead and read that big long paper to you so that it can kind of elaborate the difference in how they define the two. Um, so basically what it has to do is with a floating with a floating ground or without a floating ground, meaning two wires to each, both positive and negative. Most RCAs are, you know, have a floating ground in them, so it's interesting. Um, but yeah, it's not, you know, I guess if you could look at it as how many wires are ran, three as opposed to four, mm -hmm. um, but four is typically going to be your high level because there's a left and a right, I'm sorry, there's a positive and a negative speaker wire coming into it, so that would technically be balanced. Um, I don't know, or I'm balanced. If I get it wrong, I'm sorry, I'm really tired. But yeah, so that's how they're looking at that as far as that goes. What? Does not, oh, okay. <laughs> Caps work. <laughs> He's picking on you, man, that's all. He's that's fine. Uh, all right, so I'm sure I missed this. Are there any installers, your guys, what would that say? <sighs> I need to. Uh, it's just going crazy. Dude. I'm blind, I'm I need dark listening. sunglasses. Um, did you find the, uh, bye, see you, Lewis. Um, when I check my player and my tweeters, we're backwards. Yep, that's a whole nother story. You probably have, uh, you look tired. We are tired, and I missed that one. Um, I'm desperate for car play. Pioneer, Kenwood, Alpine, Sony. Um, are there any stars you guys recommend in the Ontario area? I would love you guys, but I'm way out of the way. I don't know where, I don't know where he's at. It's, um... They have like three stores. So the guys that make the sound mat that we're talking at, the SQL Audio, mm -hmm. they're actually in Canada. They have three stores in Canada. So you might want to check that out. Go to sqlaudio.com and um, it's uh, certified, certified something. McNulty, what's the name of his store? Certified what, do you know? Off the top of your head? I can't remember, is he in Ontario? Um, no, Ontario, Orlando, Florida. Oh, I'm sorry, you said Orlando. I, I'm an idiot. Okay, I'm tired, man. Orlando, dude. Orlando is like an hour and forty-five minutes away. Drive. Okay, my bad. I thought he said Ontario, right? I couldn't see. Um, 
I would just make the drive. A lot of people make the drive from Orlando. It's really not that bad. I mean, I make it every week or yeah. every other week, it seems like. Orlando! Just... Orlando, Orlando, Orlando. It doesn't matter. Orlando. Orlando. Okay, my bad, all right? I got it. I got it. Everyone just take a breather. Um, it's been a long couple days. Um, but no, honestly, if you're in Orlando, I would strongly recommend making the drive. Um, depending on what you want us to do, guys yeah. come over here from just Orlando cool, all the time. Yeah. Um, there's a couple hotels around here, so if you do need to stay the night, there's like uh, several hotels within walking distance. I mean, if you just want to hang out for the day. We have Christian. a nice couch you can fall asleep on. Christian here, that's that's, that's going crazy. The CD Chateaus. Yeah. Uh, he he lives in Orlando. He drives down like it seems like every Victor, month. Victor 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 lives in Miami. Oh, Florida, so, exactly. Um, I think you can make the drive. They made the drive from Maryland, too, exactly. for God's sake. We got a guy that drives from Idaho. We're yeah. getting ready to do a second car for him here shortly. So, um, where are you? I live in Haines City. We're in Clearwater, Florida. Clearwater, right Florida. Right across from Hooters number one. The original, um, the original Hooters. Is there a job market for people that don't know how to tune but are not real fast at, at installs or fabrication? So that's a great question, RC, and that, okay, that brings up a wonderful question, okay? And, and there's an actual answer for that. So yeah. there's, a, there's a place called um, 12 Volt Careers, I believe, on Facebook. It's, mm -hmm. it's a whole group. And what they're looking, what people look for are some guys want this, and some guys want one when I hired Fernando. Some that knew the pointy end of a screwdriver, but that was it. They may have put in a couple stereos here and there, but they were eager and willing to learn. There are plenty of shops that look for that because it's much easier for me to train somebody to do something the way I want it done as opposed to detraining someone doing it the way they don't want it to be done. Okay, or this is how I learned to do it, this is how I'm going to do it. That's a pain in the butt. As long as you have ambition and drive, you're going to find a job. You just might have to look outside of where you're living. So. But yeah, like Ada said, I'll hire you, come work for me. He's always hiring, okay? Mm -hmm. We're not, but that's all right. But yeah, the problem is in this industry, it's a shrinking industry in that there's a lot of kids out there that just don't want to work anymore. All they want to do is sit at home and play, you know, oh, I don't want to work, I just want mom and dad to pay for everything. So the whole point of Knowledge Fest is to train people to up your game. You know, so a lot of the guys were at Knowledge Fest. This was a, there was a lot of first time people at Knowledge Fest this year, mm -hmm. or in, at, mm -hmm. in this, at this time. Yep. You know, a lot of the classes they were asking, is this your first time there? And you know, two thirds of the class were raising their hand, this is the first time there. The whole purpose of Knowledge Fest is to train you. Uh, like we were talking about with the Educar yeah, stuff right. we picked up from Ken Ward, you know, he has two or three or four classes that he teaches there, all on tuning DSPs. Uh, Andy from Audio Frog, he has a class on the basic DSP tuning. Ken, I'm sorry, Nick from, Nick Wingate from Orca, Focal. Thank you, Wes. Uh, they have trainings that teach you how to tune their products. Even Chris Bennett has a training course on how to work the DMRTA and mm -hmm. all this fun stuff. And that's just the, t the tip, the, the tip of the iceberg at the stuff that you can learn. So, you know, for something like that, you know, if you want to learn from your house, you can pick up MECP, the study guide, basic. Read the book, take the test. Heck, just read the book. You know, it's yeah. a phone book, so I mean, if you've read it, why not take the test? But there's plenty of stuff out there for you to pick up and learn. And there's plenty of dealers out there, if you're willing to get outside of your circle of where you live, that are willing to hire you. Because we're all, there, there's people always looking. Yeah. Um, what's Jeremy's company's name? Jeremy what? Jeremy Dorn? Yeah, what's the company's name? Uh, Tint World. Tint World. Tent World is another company that's always looking for employees. Tent World is like, uh, think of it as, and I, uh, it's a uh, conglomerate, so like a... It's like, a franchise. It's a franchise. Franchisees are always looking for it. Um, so yeah, there's plenty of positions. Do it. I'm reading Basic MECP now. Good. When you get done with it, come come <laughs> See, read it. Come give me a synopsis. I what? told you. No, Ricardo. Working, or, Ricardo working already. Yeah. <laughs> told you. See, there's a porch right there. Yeah. Yay! <laughs> Funny story about the Porsche. When Paul came over to tell me about the Porsche, apparently he doesn't know that not all Porsches are the same. No, what? I know, right? It was crazy. They, 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 uh, they all say Porsche. Tint World ad is 12 volts career. Yeah, there you so go. There you Thank go. you, 12 Christopher. 12 volt careers. It's a great place to go to, to find something. Yeah. Um, in Longwood, Florida, Tint World. There you go. Uh, do you guys think 12 inch subwoofers are slower than 10 inch subwoofers? 
Slower. Well, yeah, because of cone weight okay. and magnet structure and motor drive. Are they slower? Physically, yeah, but is it something you can pick up? I mean, we're talking milliseconds here. You know, do some people like the sound of a 10 inch driver because it's a smaller cone? Might be that, um, but you know, that's it. You know, more air is louder. <laughs> Jeremy. You know, but Jeremy, yeah. Um, but like a 15 has yeah. a much bigger cone. So maybe going from a 10 to a 15, obviously, but there again, it's this, the 15 can create much deeper, louder bass than that 10, so. 40 hertz? I, is I, it 40 hertz? <laughs> yeah. It's 40 hertz for sure. Too bad your subsonic is at 45. <laughs> um, all right, guys. That, Robert? It's been fun. Wow, really? Wow, depending I mean. on the vehicle. Wow. There you go. Uh, it's been fun. It's been real. This was a blast. Thank you guys so much for all tuning in tonight, enjoying the show, and watching, and, and doing all that we do. I am going to pick one of you guys that ask a question, and you're going to get an email from Sue. We're going to send you these glasses. Thank you so much. They gave them to us. We're not going to wear them because obviously they don't do me any good. He's got a pair, so he doesn't, you know. What, you, How I can give you one? Yeah. So uh, you, you got two people. Yeah. You, no, do you have them here? Uh, no. If he finds his two of you again, if he doesn't, I'm not holding my breath. No, 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 no. I he got loses them. Everything. It's in my, it's in, it's in my suitcase. Where's so your I just suitcase? have to uh, in my home. Whatever. Yeah. No, I bring it Is tomorrow. Is it next to the keyboard? No. Listen. How about this? I bring the glasses yeah, bring, tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And then we can do it tomorrow. Well, no, I'll, I'm going to just have Haley pick two people and we'll okay, go from there. Okay, fine. Cool. Um, all right, so she's going to pick two of you guys and make comments, and yeah. uh, we're going to send you some of the Rockford sunglasses. Thank you so much Thank for you watching. Guys. See you guys Tool Door is a place where you can find cool tools that we use in all the videos, like cool Fernando, his giant panel tool. Yes, pick one of these bad boys up. These things are awesome, by the way. No kidding, man. We, we're having, like, oh my gosh. It's so awesome. if I if I could remember the installer that posted the link to these, I would definitely like give him a shout out because these things are phenomenal. Yep. But you can find it at DNF Tool Drawer for sure. Teespring is a place you can find the cool shirts like we talked about earlier. Patreon is if you want to support the show. Patreon gets a podcast. You get two of them that are videos. If okay. you want the podcast, Wait. you can what? I'm sorry, Pete. It is not like uh, we. Uh ignoring your question it's so many questions in the show sometimes i can even keep up with this so if you can type your question again or sometimes oh, three times it's just like that's tomorrow on the yeah. youtube channel i'll see the question oh, just type it in here in, in the end of the uh i won't see it on this just type it tomorrow on, the, on this this video and i'll, I'll see it pete and yeah. on youtube so and I'll, I'll get back to you um all right guys as i was saying you can find the podcast at itunes Google Play, Podbeam, lots of fun. We're going to get out of here. I need to go to bed. You guys have a wonderful night as always. We'll see you later again on Saturday. Sorry, baby. All right, guys. Bye. See you guys later. Bye.